going on everybody it's jet central coming back with another video and in this one i wanted to preview this saturday's game between the houston texans at the new york jets okay this is a weird saturday game i actually believe this is the first saturday game of the nfl season saturday at 4 30 eastern time 4 30 p.m eastern time and it's going to be a pretty good game you know the jets are going back to metlife stadium sam darnold is supposedly healthy and he's going to get the uh, starting knob and the houston texans they're coming off a loss but but before that loss they were on a massive win streak i think it was like a seven or possibly eight game maybe even a nine game winning streak i don't know what the exact number is all i know is that the houston texans started off horrible oh and three then they rattled off whatever it was eight nine wins in a row now they just lost um uh, you know, this previous week. So it's going to be a pretty solid game. And there are some, there's a few things that I really want to see from this New York Jets team coming off a comeback win against the Buffalo Bills. Number one, I want to see us be competitive. I want to see this defense, especially, try to turn the football over. I want to see some more Trumaine Johnson. I want to see some more Jamal Adams. Okay, I want to see Dale Roberts making plays. Because I think the secondary right now, they have that... Out of out of the whole New York Jets team, I feel like the the Jets secondary is the t is the the unit of the football team that has the most swag. It has the most. Uh, it has a, like a little bit of an uh, of an edge to them, right? That the offensive line doesn't have. That the defensive line doesn't have. I really feel as though the strength of this Jets team is built upon the secondary, right? Jamal Adams, like I said before, Tremaine Johnson, Marcus May is not, you know, he obviously he's not healthy, but once he comes back next season, I think the strength of this team is the secondary. Uh, so I want to see the secondary do well. I want to see us play, uh, I don't want to say um, play violent, but just play a little pissed off, you know, play like we have something to play for. I want to see a competitive game. I want to see this defense go out and really try to match Houston, you know, uh, you know, play for play. Uh, but looking at the Houston Texans, they're a really, really interesting team. Because right now they're leading the AFC South. Um, but interestingly enough, they're pretty much middle of the they're a middle of the road offense. They're a middle of the road defense when you look at the team rankings and whatnot. But here's where it kind of it kind of changes. Even though they're kind of like 15th, 16th ranked in a lot of offensive categories, 16, 13, 19 on a lot of defensive categories, they do the little things extremely well. They do the little things, the details better than anybody. They don't commit penalties on offense. They never go backwards. They don't commit penalties on defense, right? So their defense is never giving up free yards. They don't turn the ball over on offense. Deshaun Watson doesn't really, he hasn't really turned the football over via picks. They don't really fumble the football. The defense takes the football away. So when you maximize doing the little things correctly, penalties, time of possession, turning the football over, not turning the football over, not giving up free yards, you can have a middle-of-the-road defense, you can have an average offense, and still win tons of games. The proof is in the pudding. There is a method to the madness here, you know, what the Houston Texans have been doing all season. That's how they were able to win all these games, uh, because they do the little things correctly. So it begs the question that the Houston Texans, now that they're going to be on the road, can the crowd noise make a difference? Can the crowd noise hopefully get in Watson's head a little bit, make him a little rattled, hopefully get a delay a game here and there, hopefully get a false start because the left tackle can't hear. So I really want to see the Jets try to, like I said before, uh, try to match the Houston Texans on the little details. Now, under you know being coached under Todd Bowles, it's probably not going to happen because I think we have an above average defense. I think our offense is below average, due in part, but you know because of coaching. But the point is, is that we do the little things. It's just you know I'm mortified watching the time of possession, the penalties, the turnovers each and every week. Just the other the, our opponents just kill us in those categories. Just absolutely slaughter us in those categories. I feel like the Jets are never on the field. I th I feel like we always turn the football over. I believe Sam Donald still leads the league in interceptions, and he did not even play two games. So we still turn the football over at an alarming rate. Um, and then of course penalties. I feel like we lose the penalty uh, battle. Each and every week. And it's not just numbers on paper. It's not just New York Jets five penalties for 60 yards. It's the penalties are coming on a third and 10. What are you doing hopping off sides, giving them you know, a free first down? Or it's a third and 12, Hail Mary, pass interference, they pick up an, a free 30 yards. That's where I feel like the penalties are coming into play. And that, that where, where we're just getting killed. Because the Jets defense has to be on the field, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Too long. So... In this game, I'm looking at a few keys on offense. A few of the keys on offense, I feel like number one, 
We've got to be able to get the ball out of Sam Darnold's hand quickly. I want to see a lot of under center. I want to see a lot of three-step drops. Three-step drops, a quick five-step drops. No hitches in Darnold's, uh, you know, in his dropbacks. I want to see the ball out on the when his back foot hits, when his final step hits on the turf. The ball needs to be coming out, which means he needs to do a very good job of going to transitioning to his second read and then to the check down. I wouldn't even include a lot of passing plays um, with a lot of third and fourth options, or really third options, because I would want the primary, the second option, and then the check down. I don't want Darnold thinking too long, because I don't think he's going to have a lot of time to throw in this game. Looking at our offensive line, although they did step up last week, I have to give credit where it's due. The Jets' offensive line did well against the Buffalo Bills' front seven last week, but the Houston Texans, are they're a different animal. They have Jadavian Clowney upcoming free agent they have jj watt they have pieces on this houston texans defense they can wreak havoc okay jj watt's having a phenomenal season once again hall of fame player they're gonna get after the rookie quarterback so we need to make sure that sam Darnold knows where to go with the football knows where his reads are don't give him too much to think about jeremy bates don't put a lot on his plate let him go out there and just get the ball out of his hands quickly if the if the wide receivers are dropping passes it's fine as far as Darnold's development goes. If he's putting the ball on the money, if he's throwing wide receivers open and he's getting the football out of his hands quickly, and if the first read isn't there, knowing where the second read is and then going to his check down, that's really all you can ask for for Sam Darnold. I don't really expect Darnold to go in this game throwing for 350 yards, but then again, I didn't accept, I, I didn't expect him to dominate the Denver Broncos and dominate the, the Indianapolis Colts the way he did. Both of those games were uh, you know, earlier on in the season at MetLife Stadium. So maybe, maybe on a short week, the Jets could catch the Houston Texans slipping. But at the end of the day, the Texans are a really good team. Okay, they're a really good team. Now on defense, I need to address the defense side of the football. I believe one of the ways that that this Jets defense can hopefully turn the ball over, hopefully negate some of this firepower that the Texans have on offense, DeAndre Hopkins and whatnot, this is where Todd Bowles comes into play. This is where I absolutely love Todd Bowles. His defensive schemes, his pre-snap defensive looks they're pretty exotic they're pretty weird looking when you have a lot of moving parts when you have Jamal Adams you know you're showing a cover two you know and then you all of a sudden have Jamal Adams come up as kind of like the rover position and then drop back the uh the free safety in a cover one obviously it's not Marcus Mann anymore doing weird things like that but doing it pre-snap not post-snap confusing Deshaun Watson pre-snap right so before Deshaun Watson snaps the football he has a weird look he doesn't know what he's looking at and then once Watson snaps the ball, go into a different look, right? That's Because I, I don't feel like we're going to be able to get after Watson. Even though Watson has been sacked a lot this season, I don't think it's in part because of a crap offensive line. I think it's more Deshaun Watson trying to make plays out of nothing, right? Trying to make a play, trying to be a hero, and he ends up taking a sack. And also, too, another interesting thing I just want to bring up is whenever you have a dual threat quarterback... People always think all the time, like uh, when you have, whenever you have like a Tyrod Taylor, you know, Alex, whatever, like a dual threat quarterback, a running style of quarterback, that it's going to be, it, it's harder to sack those guys because they're athletes, because they can move, because they can evade, they're quick on their feet and whatnot. It's actually quite the opposite. Dual threat quarterbacks, dual threat quarterbacks are actually sacked more, and I do apologize for that, they're sacked more. Because the offensive line doesn't know where they are. When it, when it, when you have a traditional uh, drop back passer like Stafford, like Matt Ryan, um, I'm trying to think of you know a few other guys, Joe Flacco, quarterbacks like that, it's a lot easier for the offensive line to handle or do their job because they know where the quarterback is. They know he's in the pocket. They know he's going to step up. And I'm not really talking about feeling pressure in the pocket. I'm saying when 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 you have a guy like Deshaun Watson, when you have a guy dual threat quarterbacks, Tyrod Taylor, you see the offensive line struggle because they don't know where he is, you know, because he's going to escape the pocket. So quick little interesting point. Anyway, I don't think we're going to be able to get after Watson. I really don't. I think the only way this defense can have success against this Texans offense is if Todd Bowles creates exotic, weird, freaky looking defensive looks. That's how I think that this defense could do well because when you look at the the Texans offense like I said before they're they're really well balanced they run the ball they pass the ball kind of they're just a balanced team they're they're equal right they they're not a pass heavy offense they're not a run heavy offense even though they have had a lot of success running the ball doing part two Deshaun Watson keeping it and you know picking up first downs and whatnot I think this is a well balanced offense 
well-balanced offense. But when you look at what they actually do, the play design, the concepts, it's actually really, really similar to a college offense. It's not that complicated. So I think Todd, I think the defense will have a big day if Todd Bowles, if the players actually want to go out and play because we've seen it before in the past. We've seen it before where the de- when the defense doesn't want to play, like against the Buffalo Bills, you know, when we gave up whatever it was, 40, 38 points, whatever it was, to Matt Barkley, the fourth string quarterback who was making his first start in a very long time. This defense, when they don't want to play, that can happen. A travesty like that can happen. And you cannot do that to the Houston Texans. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you think the Jets can maybe, you know, pull out an up pull out an upset in this uh in the Saturday 430 matchup against the Houston Texans. So thanks so much for watching and as always, go Jets.